This week, we're exploring the city of Lemister. Located northeast of Worcester County, it's the second largest city in the county with a population of 43,782 people. What makes Lemister, a former large industrial center, so big after many of its industries have closed? Is it a new economy or just the effects of urban sprawl? I'm Gus, and let's see what's along the way. The area we call Lemister today was first settled around 1643 as part of the town of Lancaster. This was just 23 years after the Plymouth colony was established, and its settlement was seen as part of the continuous encroachment from settlers into native land. This, along with the consistent failure of diplomacy and the hanging of three Womopog members, prompted the start of King Philip's War in June of 1675 named after Sachin Metan Comet of the Womapog, son of Massasoit, who alongside Samoset met with the pilgrims in March 22nd of 1621. The war was a two-front war, with skirmishes as far south as Mount Hope, Rhode Island, westwardly to Hadley, and even as far north in present-day Maine. Lemonster was not immune to the war, as it received constant raids starting from February 1675 and onward and so the settlement was abandoned. While the Christian praying Indians in the area, who had previously converted and participated in British society, were interned on Deer Island that winter with little to no resources. It wasn't until the spring of 1680 that settling continued. To avoid further conflict, the British purchased the parts of the area now known as Lemister from the Nashaway tribe around the 1700s allowing for a formal settlement to continue. And on July 4th of 1740, Lemester was incorporated in the recently formed Worcester County. Initially, Lemester was the source of agricultural products, such as pears and cherries, alongside timber. But as the post-revolution economic woes settled in, the town and in turn its residents struggled, and it would not subside until the turn of the century. Lemester surrounds the Nashua River, heading southwardly, and is fed by many tributaries. The Nashua River, along with its tributaries, were of great resource during the early development of Lemester, as they were dotted by many mills providing different products just 50 years after the town's founding, such as grist, saddles, leather, and paper, and this was just the beginning for Lemester's industrial development. Lemester is crossed by five major routes, Massachusetts Route 2, 12, 13, and is the terminus for Massachusetts Route 117, while also being the northern terminus for Interstate 190, which originates from the city of Worcester. In this area, the Massachusetts Route 2 had its origins from the 5th Massachusetts Turnpike, first established in 1799. Lemister receives freight rail traffic from the former Fitchburg Railroad, while also receiving passenger rail traffic from the Fitchburg commuter line from east to west. Freight traffic is managed by Pan Am Railways, while passenger traffic is run by the Massachusetts Bay Transportation Authority. Lemister also contains a spur from the former Fitchburg and Worcester Railroad, currently managed by CXX, but that seems to be only on paper, as the rails appear to be seldomly used, lacking from friction since at least the late 2000s. At the turn of the century, Lemester experienced a rapid economic transition from a mostly agrarian economy to becoming a large manufacturing center alongside Fishburg, what was once an export of timber and produce now became one of shoes, combs, textiles, and potassium carbonate. 
In 1845, the Fishbrook Railroad opened a passenger stop in Lemester en route to Boston, allowing for workers from Boston to live outside of the city. And in 1850, the Fishbrook and Worcester Railroad opened passenger service in Lemester, now connecting the two biggest industrial centers in the county together with the state capital of Boston. And with the opening of the Hoosack Tunnel in 1875, Both Lemester's population and industries grew exponentially. But this growth also came with its own pitfalls, such as the case of the comb industry, as it was running out of raw materials to produce their products, those materials being horns and hoofs from cattle, and by 1883, the S. Harris and Sons Comb Factory closed its doors. But this was not the end, as a recently synthesized polymer who soon not only changed Lemester, but also the world to this day. By the turn of the 1900s, the development of celluloid revolutionized the local comb industry as it replaced the need for ivory and allowed for more flexibility and creativity. And so, the Sterling Comb Company was established in 1901, initially producing combs and hair ornaments. The company was later renamed as the Viscoloid Company and started producing toys around the First World War due to embargoes on German imports. This revolutionized the city as did with its neighboring city of Fishburg. By this time, both cities were an industrious powerhouse with Fishburg producing items such as paper, textiles and machinery. While Lemister alongside plastic products, they also produced shirts, baby carriages, and piano cases. Lemester at this time was transitioning from its former nickname of Com City to Plastic Town. And unlike other towns we have previously shown, Lemester's population actually continued to increase throughout the Great Depression. The development of injection molding allowed a new boom in plastics right as the Great Depression continued, allowing for the rapid production of sunglasses while also employing individuals who would later create their own products and help define the latter half of the 20th century. Like former employee of the now DuPont Viscoloid Company, Errol Tupper went on and founded the Tupperware Corporation in 1946, alongside pioneer saleswoman Brownie Mae Humphrey successfully marketed their plastic containers, making them a commonplace item in the kitchen turning the term Tupperware into a shorthand for that type of product. In 1957, Union Products released the Plastic Flamingo, designed by Don Featherstone, and became an icon of 1960s Americana, which continued to be sold in mass throughout the rest of the century. But by the mid-2000s, production from Union Products ended. That changed after Cato Products purchased Union Products product line now being manufactured in Fishburg. The latter half of the 20th century was a time of change for Lemister. Even though its population kept increasing, its industries began to close down one by one. There are multiple reasons for these closures, as they affected multiple industries. One reason is the offshoring of jobs, while others are more specific, such as competition changes in the post-war consumer market, or lack of innovation, such as the F.A. Whitney Carriage Company, who started to struggle since the Great Depression and did not survive, closing its doors in 1952, right at the cusp of the baby boom, while the DuPont Viscoloid Company closed its doors in November of 1977. In 1959, the New York, New Haven, and Hartford Railroad suspended passenger rail service, affecting the Lemester Center train station, closing down the station for good in 1961, while in January of 1965, the Boston and Maine Railroad Company closes North Lemester Station, just seven years after cutting passenger service all the way west to Williamstown. But in January of 1980, the Massachusetts Bay Transportation Authority reopened the North Lemester Station, providing passenger service to commuters from Fishbrook to Boston. This might have helped commuters, 
but internally, Lemester was suffering from a rising unemployment and a series of budget cuts. This did not subside as unemployment rose again with the start of the 90s recession, with companies such as Nasoya relocating outside of Lemester, while the Borden Chemical Plant closed its doors in 1987 after a three-year period of illegally releasing vinyl chloride into the atmosphere. These economic woes will slowly decrease as Lemister was nearing the 21st century. In the year 2000, for the first time, Lemister's population surpassed Fishburg's, with a population of 41,303 people, and a quarter of those were still employed by the manufacturing sector. While in the 2010 census, for the first time since the 1790, Lemister had a drop of population of 544 people, possibly due to the 2008 recession. But they made it back next census, as in the 2020 census, they recorded a population of 43,782 people, a gain of 3,023 people in just 10 years. Today, Lemister appears as a lively city dotted with symbols that harks back to Lemester's cultural history. While still regaining its footing, Lemester has kept improving, such as reclaiming part of the unused spur of the former Fishbrook and Worcester Railroad to create a rail trail, while the Fishbrook line stop in Lemester received an upgraded station with a parking garage, increasing the capacity for the seemingly unforeseen usage of the station by residents from towns such as Orange or Athol. The northern tier of the east-west passenger rail study, since the last time we spoke about it, has now gone into the planning stage, adding a passenger rail line all the way west to North Adams, with proposed stations in towns such as Shelburne Falls, Orange, Gardner, and Cambridge. But there's no current timeline, as the central east-west line has priority and would connect more towns from Pittsville to Boston than the current Amtrak line does, the Lakeshore Limited. Lemister is like many other former mill towns that have gone through transitional periods, but it has its own charm with a dense urban core that gives off a sense of place, while also having over 4,000 acres of forest provided by the Lemister State Forest. It all seemed to equate to a bright, albeit slow-burning, prosperous future. So what do you guys think? Do you live in Lemister? Have you ever visited? When I first read about Lemister, I was surprised about how much this city influenced the culture of the 20th century. From Johnny Appleseed to Pink Flamingos, and even mass-produced containers that we use every day. Well, that's all I got for you today. I hope you have a good day, and I'll see you guys next time.